Hey guys, Corey here, Mad Rack Garage. Um, just doing a little update video, shorty, on Mazmad, our 1956 Chevy Nomad. I know I haven't posted a long form video in quite a while. Um, I, last long form was right before the hurricane, and before that, I really hadn't posted much. And the reason for that is I'm kind of stuck at a standstill. I'm genuine, genuinely flustered. Uh, I don't know how else to say it, guys. Um, I've got, I'm over it itis. A lot of guys get that when they're working on their projects, when you just have one little frickin' thing after another, frickin' thing after another, after another, after another, just little stupid stuff that, uh, I just had to walk away from the car. I'll do a short video here of how far along in the process we are of our power steering upgrade. So let me turn you around. I'll just kind of walk you through what, uh, what my trials and tribulations have been. So we got it all back together. The last time you saw it, it was all apart. So one of the little things was, you can see there's no fan shroud. We had a fan shroud. It doesn't fit now with the power steering pump. It would go in the car this way. So I'm gonna turn it, set it down so you can see it. I had to drill a hole in it so that the nut for the pulley can sit recessed in there because it hits the shroud. That was a pulling it in and out two dozen times trying to get things to fit and work and it was so tight and, and it would get hung up. It was a pain in the butt and I hate this. I'm going to admit it, but it messed up a lot of my fins doing that. Started getting pretty frustrated. Then finally got it to fit and realized now the pulley was gonna hit and it was barely barely hitting but it was enough that you know to start the motor and let itself clearance but my luck would be any movement of the motor you'd have a sharp piece of plastic end up cutting the belt so i pulled it back out ain't gonna run it so that was one problem second problem is pulling this in and out radiator in and out a horseshit soldering job that the factory did the tube busted off i've never soldered brass before i'm not a plumber I had to learn how to solder it got it done it's done but it's just one of those things you're like okay i got it no you don't you ain't got it so there was that and then trying to shorten up this heater hose we had this big loop here before Trying to short that up, make it look nicer. I was gonna put and fittings, because I have them, but on this factory 56 style water pump, that piece doesn't have a place to put a wrench on it. I can see threads, but it's completely smooth. I clamped on it to try to get it to turn, no go. My luck would be I'd smash it, wreck it, end up having to do a water pump, and there's nothing wrong with this water pump. Figure it out, put a hose in, shorten one, just do it that way, done, right? So you can see down here, we got our hoses, high pressure, low pressure hoses on the pump, on the gearbox. Oh yeah, got the gearbox in. That was a nightmare. A lot of fighting, a lot of fussing. That video will eventually come out. I'm just, it's, it's not a complete video. There's no resolution to it. So no point in putting it together and boring you with all the stuff I'm trying to make it a little more entertaining um, of what was going on. But if you can't tell guys, I'm genuinely flustered right now. Um, but I'm the first to admit that something finally got me. And I'm, the reason I put the whole car back together was I had to walk away from that steering box. It was kind of a pain because I had to do it all from underneath, like we talked before in the previous videos. And doing it from underneath, there was just a lot of, lot of 
tight fitting issues and whatnot. It was fine. Got it done. It's in. And it went in simple. Everything lined up. Everything was great. And I don't know how much this is going to show up on video. But I'm going to show you anyways. Try to explain the problem. And the problem is all of our different ends. Rag joint didn't work. Coupler didn't work. Uh, just nothing's working to connect the see if I can get it in there steering column to our shaft. So I ended up doing a sleeve and then uh, ended up making it all sized up and fit and welded in the sleeve to the shaft and put the shaft in. Well, now the problem is, unfortunately, I can't show you from here. Unfortunately, the problem is now it doesn't line up. All right, this will be close enough to a prop. So this is the hole in the firewall. If you were sitting in the driver's seat, looking through this hole, you should see the steering shaft. Let me see if I'm lining this up right. In the center. And that way when you slide the mast down, the mast is centered in this hole. If you were looking through from the inside of the car out, I'm in the firewall, that steering shaft should line up in the middle. Well, it's not. It's over here. And because it's over here, the steering shaft, gearbox, put the steering shaft on. The steering shaft is literally, maybe a, if I'm lucky, a finger's width away coming through. The problem with that is when you put the steering mast slide it down, it hits this. So then you bend it over and it goes through. I got it through, it's all hooked up, but there's so much pressure pushing on that firewall that when I'm doing the column shift, that thing is, it's, it's really tight because there's so much pressure on the inside of that circle. And I'm worried that if I do that, I'm gonna end up busting the welds, that busting the gearbox, I don't know. There's a lot of pressure. I mean, you have you have a, that steering shaft coming through and then you got a, a, a coupler over it. It's all splined and if you're wrenching on that, pushing on that one way or another, it's, it, it's just, it's not a good thing, especially when you're dealing with steering. So I got, I'm like, well, you know what? I gotta be able to move this thing. So maybe I just don't drive it very much huh, until I figure it out, but I'll get it together. Cause it's in. Well, then the next part is because it's over so far, which it's not over far, it's maybe an inch, three quarters of an inch. But because of that, now the shift linkage on the column itself, not the linkage, I haven't put the linkage on yet, but where it bolts to that goes up and down with the column is hitting the exhaust manifold. So I had to walk away for a second time. <sighs> yeah, I cut it and I can move that linkage so it goes behind the exhaust manifold. Um, cut and weld it, make it a little shorter. It probably all just works just fine. But the point is, it still ain't right. That's temporary. Then when I fix it and move everything back to where it's supposed to go, if that ever happens, I don't even know how that's gonna happen. Then the shift linkage would be wrong. And I know some of you are saying, well, you know, if you had a rag joint on it, that would fix it. No, it wouldn't. If you had the coupler on it, that would fix it. No, it wouldn't. Oh, I don't know if I can do this. How well I can do this. So let's look at it from the side. This is, we'll call this the coupler. This will go over the gearbox side. That's the one that's crooked. And this we'll call the steering shaft. And because they, they're perfectly at the same plane, you can't just tilt this over. It's going to go in crooked. They're on the same plane, but they're, it's over. So that don't work. Because when you go to steer it, you're just going to get this flopping bind in your steering wheel, if you can even steer it, if you were to force it. 
a rag joint flex, but it does the same thing as this. It flexes this way. I need this, I need this to be moved over, to line up, that's it. So my other option is, it's brainstorming this, but I just don't like the idea, is, oh, this might work. Pretend that's the shaft pointing at you sitting in the car, and this is the gearbox, and I need it, I need it over here, and the, that gearbox has a long body that bolts to the frame down here. If I did this, right, I can get it into the right spot, but I'm down here's where it's mounted to the frame. <laughs> you like all <laughs> like all my props? I'm just making shit up as I go. So if this is the frame and this is the gearbox down there, what I'd be essentially doing is this to get that head to move from here to here. I'd have to tilt it, which means I'd have to shim underneath and put some kind of shim in there. Well, how much is that going to, I mean, to get that move that much, I'm going to have to put like a freaking one inch shim down there. I mean, a quarter of an inch would be too much because of all the pressure you're putting on and then the bolts are, and I'd have to drill the frame to get the bolts to go, I'd have to slot the frame to get the bolts to move. There's a lot of pressure down there when the when that's moving back and forth. I don't like the idea of maybe cracking the frame down the road from the pressure. It shouldn't have to do that. And then you run into the other problem that the output shaft that the idler arm or the, the pitman arm goes on to will be in a different position. So that's where we're at, guys. Maz mad. So any of you guys out there, I'm asking for your help. Any ideas? You ever run into this before? It doesn't make sense to me. Yes. I used a no name brand gearbox, but I kid you not, I've seen a couple of the, the, the CPP ones and the classic industry ones installed, and they are no different of a box than this. The mounting looks the same, the thickness of the mounting looks the same. I mean, how could somebody get the mold? I mean, I, I'm 90% I'm positive that they're all made by the same Chinese company, and they're just different name put on them. I said this before in the first first uh, video. Everybody's got the same damn part number. Why would you have the same part number unless you're getting it from the same supplier, right? Sounds to me like they're just using the same one. So I, I don't think it's the box. So then other people said, because I've done some research on this, maybe the body moved. Well, the gaps are fine. All the gaps are fine. I went underneath and checked all the body mounts. All the body mounts on both sides are in the exact same position. There's brackets that do this, that go down to the body mounts, and where that angles down, the body and the bracket are in the exact same position on both sides. In the back, I thought, well, maybe the back moved. And all you have to do is loosen them all up and do this with the back of the body, just a little, oh, and that would be enough in the front that would go, oh. And there's where the mounts are, there's uh, a filler panel and they're both perfectly flat with the frame. So the body didn't move. What am I missing here? Is everybody, and I mean, does everybody have this problem? If you had a CPP one, did you have a problem? And for those of you who are like, oh, you're nuts, just waller out the hole, you know, the hole. Just so there's no pressure on it and then you wanna have pressure. Okay, you're right. So I can take the pressure off. But then the steering column's crooked, and the way it mounts in the dash, it has to be perfectly straight to come through the gauge cluster and everything underneath on the dash. And then if I make it whatever, it'll literally, you'll have a crooked steering column and your steering wheel will be crooked. It'll be off center and crooked. Look like shit. So you can't do that either. So yeah, I don't know what the answer is. I'm reaching out to you guys. I'm telling you what my update is and what my conundrum is. You can already see that it's kind of off center. It's not horrible. Crooked like it is. It's not horrible. I don't know if the cover plates will go on correctly or not. But then again, the filler plate I got that covers that hole on the inside. If I waller it out, is that gonna be big enough to cover the hole then and give us a nice tight seal? That's what I gotta look into next. I just. I'm not saying wallering out the hole 
isn't off the table, but what I am saying is none of this should be happening. So I don't know what they call this. We should have a name for this amongst all of us hot rodders and guys who do this stuff in your own garage where enough stuff just starts not going correctly. And I know it's the aftermarket part suck syndrome. But it's taking wind out of my sails, guys. And unfortunately, I, I, I'd love to go work on another project. I mean, this was what happens to some guys. They just park it and go work on another project. Well, I could do that. I could. Um, we could work on the Nova. I could put the Nomad up and then take all of this stuff and put it under the Nomad. And then I could work on, on this. But honestly, I wanted to work on a couple of things that I could I could drive this hot rod season um, and car show season. And I was really planning on driving Mozmad because, I mean, we're that close. I did all the updates. We're really that close. It's just down to this stupid thing. And working on the Nova isn't going to get me... I, I don't think the Nova will be ready this year no matter what I do, finance-wise. Because I, I think I wiped the cam out, not knowing anything about the car. It's very possible this motor had never been broke in. And, or they broke it in and wiped the cam out because of the way, way it's acting. It's just acting like it's got a wiped out cam. Um, me readjusting the rockers and all that kind of stuff probably got it running decent for a little bit. But then it continued to get wiped out. Because every time I set the rockers, it runs good for five minutes and then it just starts acting a fool again. So I got a feeling we're going to be pulling cam and flushing the motor and doing all kinds of stuff like that but i do want to get into it soon and just look in there and uh mushroom the top of one of the valves probably because of that cam being wiped out and that was before we switched over to the roller rockers so probably gonna end up pulling heads and getting head work done and, and getting a different cam and lifters and all of that before it goes back together and i'm just financially i just can't do that right now so this got all my money and uh this needs to be earning its keep so there's your update guys a lot of babbling a lot of talking them just uh sharing my woes with you and asking for your help if uh if you got an idea of why that's off and, and how to fix it without messing up a bunch of stuff or I mean, we can always cut and weld anything we want and make it work. I don't want to do that to this car. You know, this isn't some hack job car. I mean, yes, it's a survivor patina, but it's not something I just want to hack together and make work. I don't. Worst case scenario, I'm going to have to pull that gearbox back out, line it up with the gearbox that was in there, and, and do some measuring and see if maybe it is too damn big. And what's the answer then? If it is too big, what's the answer? Bad gearbox? Been, it's been a couple of few months. Um, can't return it, I don't think. I mean, you could try, but ain't returning it and spending more money on a, on a more expensive one that maybe fits. Maybe that's the difference. I don't see it, but they didn't do any machine work on any of the other ones. I've looked. There's no machining work done or anything to make them look like they fit better. It looks exactly like this one did. So I don't know. Let me know. Let me know down in the comments. Let me know in the comments if you've run into this before or things just nickel and dimed you to a point where you just had to walk away from your project nothing to do with my power steering just share your woes with me make me feel a little better that i'm not the only one out there i know i'm not but it'd be nice to hear from one of you guys that oh yeah i had one that every time i touched it this was different or that was wrong or this didn't fit or that and i just had to walk away from it and let it sit for a while you know let me know share your uh experience and your hardships with me make me feel better man make me feel better thanks for listening Appreciate you. <laughs> and if you can, I mean, we're still not monetized at all. It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. If you've made it this far in the video, like, subscribe, comment. It helps me out. Maybe someday this channel will be monetized and at least I can get, you know, a couple 500 bucks a month out of doing this to put towards projects and help move things along a little smoother. I'd be very grateful. All right, guys. Get out in the garage and do something. Keep wrenching. <laughs>